Good afternoon, viewers. Welcome to yet another fun-filled and exciting episode of your favorite show, Generation C. I'm Hanche Kapofi. And I'm Jamie Lee Loss. This show is aimed at empowering the youth through our three segments, The Zone, School Corner, and Varsity Chat Room. Generation C is the show that recaps on The Zone, giving you reason why it is the best read on a Tuesday. The Zone is published every Tuesday in the Namibian Sun, the Republican, as well as the Algaminer Titan. Today is lazy day, so let's laze off. Today in studio we have a very special guest, but before we get into that interview, let's take a look at this week's publication. Well, on page one we have the Namibian Students Financial Assistance Fund, which urges loan holders to pay. On page two we have the National Youth Policy Article. And on page four we take a look at youth and agriculture. On page 6, we have the Career VX that will take place on the 12th of August and that will be streamed live on the Facebook and Career pages. And on page 7, we have a star teacher that shares with the us their experiences. Wow, what a fire edition of The Zone we have there, I don't you think? I agree with you, Hancho. Right, uh, please do stay tuned and glue to your seats because it's time to bomber to the school corner. Welcome back to our segment called School Corner. In this segment, we focus on all the school news from around the country. In this week's edition, we have Bantuk Afrikaans Privat School, Ochivarongo Secondary School, Westside, and Komastura. Hancho, can you please tell us more about what these schools have done? Well, first in line, we have the Ochivarongo Secondary School with their newspaper called the Ochi Gazette. In this next video, we take a look at Timothy Liebenberg, a horse rider and AS level student at the school. Good day, my own viewers, Ochivarongo Secondary School Gazette readers, and the nation at large. I'm Karika Shikonde, your editor for the Ochi Gazette for the year 2021. I'm honored and pleased to be joined, not by one guest, but two guests. Good morning, Timothy Liebenberg and Sunset. Good morning, Kari. Thank you for having us. He looks ecstatic to be here. <laughs> it's always a pleasure. So, by now, I feel like, as an astonishing horse rider that you are, you have heard this question multiple of times. So how does it feel to be at the position you are right now with your whole side? It feels, it feels very good. It's been a lot of years of hard work and sweat and tears and falls. So to be where I am, I'm very grateful. I, I couldn't ask for more. Did you expect to be at the position you are right now? Being you last year, did you expect to be in the position you are right now? Not at all. Um, the thing is with COVID last year, I couldn't go visit my horses and I couldn't go practice. So this year I wasn't expecting such a, a a good result is what we got, but it, it went really well despite our, our troubles that we've had. <laughs> so, uh, I know I'm not the only one right now who wants to know who Timothy Libombell is, apart from your horse riding. Who is Timothy? <laughs> well, um, I'm just a normal high school student that's trying to survive AS levels at this stage. <laughs> and <laughs> But yeah, I, I started riding when I was young and uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm just the average person. There's nothing weird on me. <laughs> so. Um, when an individual does an astonishing act or an astonishing thing, they always ask this question, what was the motivation behind your horse riding? When I started, we had no rugby teams, we had no, no soccer teams, no, no school sport. So I decided, let me do something that I can start with on the farm and just start slowly, you know. And then it sort of just escalated into something good. I don't, and when it started to catch speed, it from there horse riding sort of just tickled me and then it was my passion so 
So our last question would be what 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 advice would you give to the youth or the younger generation that is looking up to you right now? Because I know there's there's always someone looking up to an astonishing person like you, one or two or three people looking up to you. What will your advice be? To I just say if you're passionate, work hard. Don't let anyone tell you this or that. There'll always be haters in life. Just brush them off, ignore them, and do your best because it'll it'll get you far. Hard work always pays off. That's all for me and Timothy and Sunset. Please stay tuned and read the article below. Now we take a look at Komastura. I'm pretty sure that all our readers out there will find this article quite interesting. Wow, amazing content right there. Let's head over to the Ori Express all the way in the coast from Westside High School. We take a look at an article about learners educated on youth empowerment. Last but not least, we focus on Bentuk Afrikaans Privat School and their Vapran. I'm pretty sure that all our Afrikaans readers will have quite a good read with this one. If you thought that was all we had for you, well, we're clearly, you're clearly mistaken. Before you go, before we go, we have a video from Ms. Naris, a grade six teacher at Fun Rain Primary School, who shares her views on the students coming back to school. She's clearly excited and cannot wait to start teaching again. Do make sure to join their Telegram channels to read more. Um, I'm Ms. Naris, and grade six teacher at Fun Rain Primary School. Today is the first day for our learners to return, as you can see. We are busy with the screening process. This is where we take the temperatures and then the learners go to class. We, before we enter the class, we disinfect, uh, we sanitize the hands again. And then we go in, disinfect the tables and chairs, and then we sit down. I am very happy to see my little ones back. Even though you cannot see, I'm super, super excited. I wish I could give them a hug. It's been a long time. Unfortunately, COVID came and they took away the hug so that more personal relationship between me and my Lena is gone out the window. Other than that, yeah, let's see how it goes. The learners have been at home for a long time, even though we were giving them work over WhatsApp and so on. It, it will, it's going to take them a little time to get back into the swing of things. And um, all we need to do now is be patient with them. As we know, COVID um, took a lot of people, so some of them came back orphans, lost their parents, even though us as teachers also we lost people, but we have to be strong for our learners. Um, look at them. Aren't they beautiful? All dressed well, clean, hair neatly done, wearing the correct school bags. Because we check that every day also at our school. Come here with a funny hairstyle. Your parents are immediately called. You must go home. This is not a fashion fashion show place here. So yeah, I'm I'm super excited. Very. That was such an amazing video. But now we head over to Varsity Chat Room. What an exciting school corner that was. Let's take a look at page eight of the zone. On page eight, we take a look at transforming Namibia's higher education through discussions as we celebrate Namibia's Higher Education Day. As we said earlier, please do stay tuned because up next we have Olavi Hamwele, the Chief Human Capital and Corporate Affairs of the Namibian Students Financial Assistance Fund. As mentioned earlier, we are joined by the Chief Human Capital and Corporate Affairs at the Namibian Students Financial Assistance Fund, Mr. Olavi Hamwele. Mr. Olavi, how are you doing this morning, this afternoon? Uh, I'm fine, Kapofi, um, and uh, good afternoon. Yes, welcome to our show. Thank so, you. 
Mr. Olavi, could you tell us the importance of repaying uh, the NASFAF loan? Um, well, let, let us understand the mandate of, mm. uh, of NASFAF. Um, the mandate is basically to fund uh, students that qualify for, for funding to pursue tertiary education and also to do some research uh, for the development of the country. Mm. Now, the, the, it, it, this assistance is given in a form of a loan. And a loan, by definition, is something that you borrow. And in this particular case, it's money that you have borrowed mm. and you need to pay it back. Now, the importance of paying back is basically to make NASFAF a revolving fund. Mm. Uh, so that NASFAF will be able, at any given time, will be able to fund uh, students uh, in the future. So that is the most, most important, Im important thing. But, uh, so, but, but we have to understand that it is, a, it is a something that you have borrowed and you have to pay it back. Mm -hmm. If you don't pay it back, obviously, you can easily be blacklisted mm. or uh, a court order can be um, taken against you. Yes, yes. So to avoid litigation, to avoid blacklisting, uh, pay back the money and also to assist another person yes, uh, going yes. forward, pay, pay, pay back the loan. Yes. Yeah. Um, so speaking of paying back the loan, uh, what is the process that one needs to go through in paying back the loan? Uh, the process is very simple. Mm. Uh, what you need to do, um, you log on, you log on onto our website, mm -hmm. www.nsf.na, and then obviously you go to how to pay back your your your, your loan. Alternatively, you can just send an an, an email to recovery at nsf uh, recovery at nsf.na, uh, mm -hmm. and then obviously um, uh, our staff members will respond to you. Yes. So what you need to do is to give your name and your, your ID because your ID should serve as a reference number for you. And then they will send you your statement and also the other details and then they can guide you on how to make arrangement for paying back. Yes, yes. Yeah. All right, um, so Olavi, earlier you mentioned that um, failure to pay back your loan can result in things such as in court order, um, et cetera, et cetera. Could you tell us a little bit about um, if a student uh, who was a former beneficiary of NASFAF has graduated but um, did not secure a job, how do we then go about that when they are not paying back their loan? Yeah, the, the contract is very clear. Um, after six months of graduation, mm -hmm. you should now start making arrangements to pay back. Mm -hmm. But in case you have not uh, secured employment, what you do, you just communicate to NASFAF that, okay, this is the situation that I find myself in. Mm -hmm. I don't have a job, and therefore, uh, can we then uh, m uh, make a postponement? What we will do then, we make an arrangement mm -hmm. that uh, uh, your loan, uh, your repaying back um, uh, uh, arrangement will be postponed mm -hmm. uh, until such a time that you, 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 you secure employment. Yes. But people should also understand that employment is just not, uh, is, is not only the formal employment. Yes, that yes. includes also in the premiership. I mean, if you are doing something um, or on your own, you have started your business, uh, you, you can come forth and, 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 and start paying back. So, um, okay, so it's, it's, you said it's not only formal employment. So things such as entrepreneurship, maybe having a pump plumbing business on the side, electrical, something, something, they need to come and pay back their loan as well. Definitely. All Definitely. right. Because that loan will not disappear, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, and, uh, and uh, there are so many ways that we can also find out that you are doing some work. Um, yes. We, we, can, we have... Uh, um, um, relationship with different stakeholders, mm -hmm. uh, including the Minister of, fi of, of Finance, uh, we can easily pick up uh, that you, you are basically either you tender here and there, you got a, a contract here and there, you are into a particular business, mm -hmm. uh, we will easily be able to pick it up and then, and then come back to you. All right. Um, seeing that it, as an entrepreneur, um, you also need to start p paying back your loan. Are there different methods um, of paying back the loan? Uh, generally, we, you can either do a cash deposit into mm. our account. You can also do EFT, electronic funds transfer. You can do um, debit order. Mm. And then also you can also have the deduction uh, from the source, I mean the salary uh, deduction. All right. Yeah. Um, apart from not being to able, not able to 
fund more students? What other effects does NASFA face uh, when people do not repay their loans? Yeah, the, the effect is, um, is, is, is the, the, the threat mm. um, to the future Namibian child. Mm. Uh, because if, if NASFA is not transformed into a revolving fund, uh, we will have a problem because Treasury uh, may not be able to fund everybody going forward. Now, gi let me give you an example. Uh, over the years, um, we have been talking about the parental income or your own income as a threshold. Mm. And we have been talking about uh, 750 as a threshold. But in actual fact, uh, the government was so generous that everybody was basically funded. Mm. But this year, uh, when we realized that we have about 23,000 applications and we have only 1.2 billion, uh, this 1.2 billion could only accommodate about 8,000 people. So meaning that we could have other people not funded. Mm. So then we, we implemented what we call now the mean testing, the, 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 the parental income. Mm. And our cutoff, our cutoff uh, uh, was only 500,000 threshold. Right. So meaning that if your parents are earning more than that, unfortunately you cannot be funded. Right. Now that particular threshold may, uh, uh, may reduce as we go. I mean, if people are not, fa are not paying back, so that we can uh, meet uh, government halfway, then obviously this threshold will just be reduced uh, uh, year by year. Mm. So to th this year now is 500,000. Maybe next year we can reduce to 400,000, the other year to 300,000, mm. meaning that many people will not be supported. Mm. Uh, but if you pay back, obviously what you are paying back uh, will help. Yes. Now, giving you an another example is that, um, the matured loan that we are talking about is, uh, is more than $3 billion. Mm. And we believe that in terms of our records, the $2.5 billion is recoverable. All right. Now, can we imagine now if we recover that $2.5 billion? Mm. Uh, because, I mean, our, 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 our annual budget is about $1.5 billion, $1.6 billion. So if we can get maybe the half, 50% uh, of the $2.5 billion, then we are sorted. Yes. Yeah. Amazing, amazing. Any final uh, comments, Mr. Olavi? Well, I am just would like to emphasize that by not paying back your loan, you are basically denying your own child, your mm. sister, your brother, your neighbor, your cousin, an opportunity and the rights to higher education. So mm. you need to pay back the loan. Yes. And also, by paying back the loan, you are basically doing yourself a favor because this loan will not disappear. Mm. You are doing yourself a favor that you are not going to be blacklisted, meaning that you will be eligible, you will be eligible to borrow. Mm. And also, there will be no court order against you. There will be no litigation for you. So then you are clean as an individual, as a Namibian person. Mm. And also, it just shows that you are responsible you care for another person. That's why you are paying back. Yes. So pay back the money. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Olavi. You're welcome. Right, uh, you heard it there yourself from Mr. Olavi that it is very important for everybody to repay their loans. Unfortunately, all great things do have to come to an end. From me, Jamie Lee, and the rest of the Generation C crew, it is bye for now. <laughs>